Well, the trade deadline has come and gone for the NFL, and the Arizona Cardinals made one move to address their edge rushing need. Let's dive into what happened around the NFL. back in to another video definitely do me a huge favor smack that like button and subscribe for more Arizona Cardinals content all on this channel we're covering the Arizona Cardinals throughout the entirety of the 2024 season so subscribe it up it's absolutely for free and we're on the road to 16k so subscribe it up super super easy hit that red button down there but let's go and dive right into it ladies and gentlemen we have already come and gone from the NFL trade deadline. And I'm not going to lie to you, there were some teams that went all in, right? Well, maybe not all in, but there were some really, really good splash moves out there. Whether you want to say it's the Marshawn Lattimore over to the uh, to the Commanders. Good for the Commanders, man. What they have done and just that small sample size with that GM over there, man, they have made a contender out of themselves. And of course, they're making a big push, right? They're making a real, real big push uh, for the NFC East. So congratulations to the Commanders. They got a really good thing going on over there right now. Now, I want to focus here on the edge rushers that have been, you know, traded away uh, so far. And so far, there's only been three of them uh, that got traded away. And that's also including uh, Baron Browning uh, for the Arizona Cardinals that happened yesterday. So... The first trade that we ended up seeing this morning was that Zadarius Smith uh, was traded to the Lions. Now, essentially what the compensation was, um, was the Lions are getting Zadarius Smith um, and a seventh round pick in 2026. Um, and then the Browns are getting a fifth round pick in 2025 and a 2026 sixth round pick, right? So they essentially swapped... 2026 picks, right? They got a seventh. They get they get a sixth, um, and then a fifth round pick was able to get Zadarius Smith, and obviously uh, a guy that has a lot of still tread on his tires, right? Still got five sacks on the season. He's having a really really good respected season, and I think he's actually going to be a lot better in that Detroit Lions defense, especially with the uh, uh, the loss of Aiden Hutchinson, which is a huge blow for their defensive line. So Zadarius Smith ends up going to the Lions, um, and then we ended up seeing Preston Smith. Um, which was another uh, name that was kind of floated around uh, the Green Bay Packers. Uh, they ended up trading him away for a seventh round pick to the Steelers. So the Steelers so far have been very, very active in this trade market. They ended up getting uh, Mike Williams. And then on top of that, they ended up getting uh, Preston Smith uh, to hopefully be on the opposite side of uh, TJ Watt over there on that defensive line. So there's that. Preston Smith, also another guy up there in age as well. And then the Arizona Cardinals, of course, uh, going after uh, Baron Browning for a six-round pick yesterday. That seems to be the extent so far and what has happened in the edge-rushing core. I honestly thought we are going to see a lot more names get floated around. Now, one of the biggest names out there is obviously Aziz Ojolari. And the way that the New York Giants has handled this whole situation with them saying, yes, we're looking for this compensation, right? We're looking for that compensation because we ended up seeing Diana Rossini come out and say that the Giants have come out and said that they're looking for a, I believe they said a high fifth round pick, if not a late fourth round pick. And I know there's a lot of Cardinal fans that were trying to jump on the idea of, hey, why not the Cardinals going after, you know, a potential Aziz Ojolari because currently right now he's got six sacks under his belt, but Per Mike Garofalo, probably about 30 minutes before the trade deadline ended up ending, he ended up putting this tweet out and said, barring a significant pivot by 4 p.m. Eastern, the Giants will retain linebacker Aziz Ojolari. They made it clear they weren't going to give him away and held firm. Ojolari now heads down the home stretch of his contract towards free agency. So it's a big, big storyline to figure out what the Giants were going to do with Aziz. Biggest reason as to why is because... This is his last year under contract, right? And right now, obviously, they got Thibodeau, and then they also got um, Brian Burns, um, and they might pay Thibodeau. So it's a big question as to, hey, are you going to get something for Aziz, or are you just going to let him walk? It almost kind of seems like they might let him walk here. Now, obviously, Cardinal fans right now, a lot of disappointment because fourth round pick or a fifth round pick, that doesn't seem to be a, a bad trade-off offer, right, for the Cardinals to potentially go into a... I'm not going to say all in state, but I know there's some Cardinal fans out there that are kind of saying the same things of, you know, trust the process or, um, you know, the Cardinals weren't going to do something like that anyways, but a fourth round pick or a fifth round pick for a potential guy that can get you, you know, or to get, that can get himself double digit sacks in this year. I don't feel like it's a, a bad trade-off personally right now. Obviously, I don't think any teams were in on this whole 
Aziz Ojolari, or maybe they were trying to severely undercut the New York Giants over there, but man, a fourth or a fifth round pick kind of seemed like a steal to me, especially for a young kid that potentially can sign a long-term extension, uh, potentially a kid that has potential and a kid that's proven that he can actually you know, produce in the NFL level. I think his last uh, year was his worst career year in terms of stats. 2023, he had 2.5 sacks, nothing to write home about. But 2022, he had 5.5 sacks. In 2021, which I believe is his rookie year, he had eight sacks, right? So in 2024, currently right now, he's got six sacks and is training in potentially to have double digit sacks in this year for uh, stats alone. So it's, it's one of those things that the Arizona Cardinals, for some reason, felt like that was way too much of a compensation. A fourth round pick or a fifth round pick. Now, I ended up doing this on my um, on my live stream because we were live for what seemed to be... Well, it actually was four hours. We were live for the whole morning um, trying to see what the Cardinals are going to do or, or what they're not going to do, right? Now, we ended up looking at the fourth round, fifth round picks for the Cardinals, uh, you know in the last two years of Monty Awesome for it. But let's take a look here at the 2023 draft class and what kind of transpired, right? So our fourth round pick in 2023 was John Gaines II. Now, obviously a guy that's able to play guard or center. He's dealt with some injuries last year in his rookie year. We didn't end up seeing him because he got hurt in preseason. We ended up kind of seeing some a little bit injuries here and there uh, this year, but nothing to the point where he's like on IR or anything like that. But he's not a guy that's really kind of producing very much for the Cardinals, right? And that's a fourth round pick that we used on, on John Gaines, the second, uh, a fifth round pick that we also used last year. I'm sorry, not last year in 2023 was Clayton Toon, quarterback out of Houston right now. Obviously Kyler Murray is going to be QB one as long as he's healthy. And, uh, there was a fifth round pick that we ended up using, uh, for a quarterback. Um, and then we had another fifth round pick as well. And we ended up getting Owen Papu, right? Um, and that was a fifth round pick pick uh 168th overall so overall like what i'm seeing from this fourth round and fifth round picks that we've had in 2023 none of them have really transpired in terms of blossoming right into what we were hoping we were getting now they're not bad players but i mean all of them are still potential at this very moment right now let's take a look at the 2024 um nfl draft right we had a fourth round pick in uh taylor dadron damerson which is rabbit now he could still be a really good safety for the cardinals right now here's the big question are the cardinals going to decide to sign buddha baker because if they do decide to sign buddha baker what happens with rabbit right are we going to get a a really good player that just doesn't see the light of day because of the starters that we currently have so right now way too early to say if he's a good pick or not um and then you also got edge uh xavier thomas right which finally is now starting to kind of get an opportunity and i think he's got 1.5 sacks this last game so showing some promise but still again way too early to kind of tell uh to see if he's going to work out in the nfl or not and, and then a couple other fifth round picks that we had christian jones which a lot of people when we drafted him saying a potential right tackle of the future for the cardinals but hasn't really shown that he can play at this level right now development is definitely something that needs to happen right i'm not saying these guys are busts or anything like that but this is all potential, right? Now, we had another fifth-round pick as well, and this is the last fifth-round pick in the 2024 NFL Draft, and that was Tyjon Palmer, wide receiver, and he hasn't really done very much for the, the Cardinals as well. So I get that this, you know, Monty Austin Fort regime really, really, really likes... They like their draft picks, right? They like their draft picks, but I feel like we're just putting way too much on these draft picks value, but I feel like that's kind of the same thing around the NFL in general, right? Why not get somebody that can prove that they can work in the NFL, right? Because we're going based off potential, right? You know, Dadron Taylor, uh, Demerson, potential, Xavier Thomas, potential, Christian Jones, potential, Tejon Palmer, potential, right? And then, of course, Clayton Toon, Owen Papu, um, and then uh, John Gaines is second, right? If the rumor or the report that came out from Diana Rossini is true that the Giants were looking for a high fifth round pick or a late fourth round pick, man, I'm just so curious to figure out what these conversations were having, right? Because it almost kind of felt like the Cardinals jumped the gun in yesterday's trade. I'm not coming out here and saying Baron Browning is not a, a good pick. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm, right now, I hope he actually 
gets me excited, right? I hope he actually gets me to the level of saying, man, what a good pick here for a sixth rounder, right? What a good trade. Now, as of right now, I'm not high on this, but I'm also not low on this either, right? I don't think it's a bad trade, but I also don't think it's one of those moves that show this organization and this team that this front office believes in what we potentially could accomplish, right? Because that's the way my mind works, right? Because although we could potentially got a really good pick here in Baron Browning for a sixth round pick, we don't know. We're all still living in potential, right? So I'm curious to figure out how his snap share is going to look like. By main edge rusher, I mean going to have about 60, 75% of the snaps, 65% of the snaps, right? Because if that's the case and we're getting a lot of value back from him, and then this might be a really, really good pick for the Cardinals, right? But we've been living in a world in the last two years with not having a dominant edge rusher. And I'm not saying Aziz Ojulari would have fixed it, right? And it's going to be, oh, it everything's cured not saying that but at least making a swing for a fourth or a fifth doesn't seem too crazy of an idea to me right but being the fact that he didn't get trade in general that actually does put me at ease i'm not gonna lie to you that does put me at ease the fact that nobody went ahead and, and traded for aziz Ojolari because i think the falcons were very high on him or at least asking and then the cincinnati Bengals were also asking about him as well so ladies and gentlemen right now recapping this whole trade deadline one move has been made for the Cardinals, and that was yesterday in getting Baron Browning for a 2025 six-round pick. What are your thoughts here on the way that the Arizona Cardinals are maneuvering this trade deadline? Do you feel more confident, more comfortable, because Darius Robinson might be making his appearance after the bye week? What are your thoughts so far on how the Arizona Cardinals have, uh, you know, maneuvered the trade deadline here in the 2024 season. Let me know in the comments below. I appreciate y'all for tuning in as always. Have a great rest of your day and go Cardinals.